We're so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. Worship really just another word for getting together, singing, putting our attention on Jesus, and letting him touch our hearts. And so this morning as we prepare, the Lord is going to come and share um, the announcements this morning. I wanted to say that we're, we're in the midst of switching it up because sometimes we go right from this great worship and then we come into what seems to rock the whole place and, and we talk about announcements and then it's kind of an interruption almost. Some people have talked about that and felt it and I, I agree. Um, what we're thinking about doing is just put the announcements up on the screen as you come in so that we roll and you can read them. So make sure that you do in the future. Just pay attention to what's up here and um, that's going to be our way of conveying what we feel is what needs to help in that week. So, sorry. Can I have the biggest complainer of it? I feel like I get up here and it feels like it does shake it up. It's not where I really want to be. And um, I think if announcements are important and everybody needs to hear it, it's, 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 it's okay. I really was the one who said it to him. So, don't anybody feel bad. I lost my volunteer job. It's okay. Um, I just wanted to kind of go over a couple things. First, I want to welcome Don Kinsley back. Don. For some of you who don't know Don, um, you might not have been here when we first started, and John's been gone now for how eight, long? Eight months. Since eight months. Okay. Don is um, a missionary over in Ukraine, and he has been there for eight months. He's back to stay with us for six weeks, I think. So we'll see him off and on. I'm sure he's got other places he has to visit too. But um, we're really happy he made it back. He had a great flight, 45 mile an hour crosswinds, Heathrow Airport. Really exciting. Talk about trusting in the Lord. He trusted and here he is. So we're really happy to have him back. I did just want to tell you, we are supposed to be starting our Bible studies this week, but has anybody watched the weather? Um, it's supposed to be crazy. We're supposed to get up to eight inches, if you don't know, in the first storm. That's a Monday, Tuesday storm. And then there's a Wednesday, Thursday storm. So we just thought, we don't want to start it off that way and have some people make it for the first and some people not make it to do the weather. So we are going to postpone it until the following week. I do have the original list of people who signed up for Bible studies. Things might have changed. You might need to cross your name off. You might need to add your name on. But also in there, if you could make sure you give us your number and email address and that kind of stuff so we can get in contact with you. And also, if you put an L for the Lakeville study, which will be on Thursday evening in Lakeville, and an R for the Rochester study, which will be on Tuesday nights. So if you could just do that, that would be awesome. And then my last thing is, if all of a sudden you hear like this really rumbling, crazy sound, it is the snow up on top of the hangar. And what it does is the, it heats up from the sun and then a whole panel of snow goes rolling down. And it could really scare you and you might think something's wrong and it's not. It's just a snow slide. That's all. And it's too bad you cancel on Tuesday because I was making gingerbread. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We'll make it the following Tuesday, though, right? <laughs> I don't know if I've been eating it already. <laughs> I had it for breakfast. You had it for breakfast? I'm, like, I'm coming to breakfast, y'all. I did it the wrong way. It was on the whole time. Sorry, I was muted. And you would like to see that's, what you would like. That's a first. A couple of things. Um, with the announcements, um, the Bible studies will be at 6.30. So just keep that in mind. If it's Lakeville or Rochester, either way, they're going to be at 6.30. She just, she just, she just announced said that. Lakeville or Rochester. Oh, Lakeville or Rochester. Okay, so, we'll, so Margie's house in Rochester, the one that cooks the gingerbread cookies for everybody that comes. For her son. It's 10 Marion Road. It's right at the center of Rochester, Mary's Pond Road, and 105. So we will, um, the week before, the Sunday before it starts, we will make sure that we have some maps out and stuff like that. So we'll have that information. We're putting these right on this table, right here. Putting that information there, so if you sign up, um, again, if the sheets fold, just flip it over, you should be able to put it on the back. Uh, the other thing, the other announcement, um, well, the other one in Lakeville is at uh, Dawn and Diane Frenzalius. Okay. And you know, I yeah, know it's Bashan 19, Lane. 19. 19 Bashan Lane in Lakeville. Okay, but we'll get that stuff out and you'll be able to see that in the week before. All right? Um, the other thing is, if because of the snow up on top, don't stand out near here and have your coffee or smoke your cigarettes or whatever it is you're doing and keep the kids away too because <laughs> if the snow falls, it's probably going to be pretty heavy. So just keep that in mind. All right? All right. That should do it for the announcements. Um, this morning, 
I wanted to start a series, and we're going to come back to this series several different times. This week, probably next week, and then there'll be other times in the future that we'll come to it as well. And what I'm calling it is things that need fixing or splaining. And what that is, is that there's a lot of terms and terminologies and things that we hear, especially within our Christianity, within Christian circles. And they can be confusing, and they can be misleading, and some have some very deep and good truths to them, and some are just not what they appear to be. And so we're going to look at those things so that we can either fix them or explain them. All right? So this is what we're getting into starting today. Um, and we're going to start off with a little bit of a video that kind of gives a little bit of an idea of what I'm talking about. I don't know if we got audio. Try it, see what happens. Are you a Christian girl that loves taking photos of her devotions? Do you spend hours framing the perfect picture without the payoff of people noticing how spiritual you are on the internet? Introducing Christian Girl Instagram. 101 tips and tricks to get more likes on your devotional photos. Hi, I'm John Christ with Christian Girl Instagram. Do you struggle to get likes on those devotional Instagram photos? Hashtag the struggle is real. From the best-selling author of shameless workout selfies comes Christian Girl Instagram. I would always get totally stressed out trying to decide which Bible verse to show. <laughs> Not anymore. Okay, you're always going to want to stay away from common verses like Jeremiah 29 11 or John 3 16. No matter what verse you choose, you always want to make sure you highlight multiple verses with multiple colors. Because after all, what's the point of having devotions if no one knows about it? I used to spend five minutes reading the Bible, and then like 30 minutes trying to figure out a hashtag. Then I found Christian Girl Instagram. My book includes over a thousand hashtag suggestions like Coffee with Colossians, Bliss, Serenity, Much Needed, and of course, hashtag Bless. Buy Christian Girl Instagram today and we'll include our 31 piece package of options to put in the background of your photo. Things like a candle, a precious bowman stall, a subscription to Relevant Magazine, kale chips, and of course, a coffee cup with the Bible verse on it. Thanks to inspiration from Christian Girl Instagram, I took down my Marilyn Monroe poster and replaced it with footprints in the sand. So clear off what's really on your desk and replace it with new products from Christian Girl Instagram. Christian Girl Instagram now includes bonus tips like if you're going to include your hand in the photo, always wear a purity ring. And if you're going to include additional reading material in the background of your photo, always avoid extremes. We don't want people to think you're too prosperity driven by maybe having some Joel Osteen. Yeah, we don't want people to worry about your theology by having some Rob Bell or Mark Driscoll, okay? You want to stay right in the middle, maybe some Joyce Meyer, some Beth Moore would be perfect. And remember, anything leather bound is really going to pop with that Valencia Instagram filter. Christian Girl Instagram is great. My devotions are now constantly being interrupted by people liking my post. Bye now, and I'll also include my additional book, Announcing Your Social Media Fast. Tips and tricks for effectively telling people you're fasting while ignoring all of Jesus' teachings about telling people you're fasting. Christian Girl Instagram can be yours today. This book and so much more available to you all for the cost of less than a pair of yoga pants. I don't always do devotions. But when I do, I Instagram it. I thought it was over too. Yeah. It was over before it began. Um, if you want to go to that website and know how to get the, uh, that, let me know and I'll, I'll tell you how to get it. Um, obviously, I'm showing you something that is making fun of what some people tend to focus on when it comes to 
you know, their faith and what they do. It's, it's a tongue-in-cheek way of saying we have foolish things that happen within our culture because we try and find ways of explaining what it is that we're experiencing. And I think that we, we can twist it and turn it into something that it shouldn't be, right? Obviously, it's not wrong to hashtag or, show, or share your faith on the internet, right? It's not wrong. But how do we do it, and how's it coming across? And so as we start to dig in today about things that need fixing or explaining, I think this is sometimes how they start. We're doing something that we want to share our faith. We're doing something that we want to share with other people. And yet we come up with things that maybe are a little bit misleading, right? And so as we look today, I wanted to talk about a couple of few um, things that you've probably heard that maybe need a little bit of explaining or fixing. The, the four phrases that I'm looking at starting with is accept Jesus as Lord and Savior into your heart. Or accept Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior. You, how many people have heard that phrase before? Okay. And we're going to kind of look into that one a little bit. Um, we're going to look into another phrase that maybe a lot of people have heard and maybe kind of like, what is that thing? Because I've actually heard people say, what is it? Born again. How many people have heard that phrase? Born again. Okay. And so what is that? You know, is that a denomination? Is that something that we do? We'll look into that a little bit. Another one, walking with Jesus. Okay. Are you walking with Jesus? Has anybody ever said that? Are you walking with Jesus? I most of the time stumble with Jesus, but you know, you get the idea, but we'll look into that one as well, right? Walking with Jesus. And the last one, a true believer. Are you a true believer? What does that mean? And what do we think when we hear it? Now remember, we always want to be able to come back to the Word. This is where we get our answers, okay? There's a lot of opinions out there um, based on what people kind of say and what they think. and. Yet, if we come back to the Word, we can look and say, well, what does this say? As we look at the Word, it's important to remember what? Context is key. When we're looking at God's Word, we don't say things like, oh, look, they're dying to see you. Everything's great. Oh, look, they're dying. You know what I mean? That context is key. It says, I'm dying to see you. Everything's great. That means we don't say they're dying. We, it, it says that... They're dying to see you. That's a phrase that we use in our culture today, right? So when we're starting to get into the word, we're always going to want to come back to what was being said, what was going on in the background, and how can we understand this for what it's truly trying to convey from the author to the reader. Ultimately, the author is God. Now, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. The author is God. And the authors that he used with these gentlemen that were saying, God, show me and help me to teach those around me. Let me share what it is you're showing me. And so we need to understand what was going on in the background, what were they trying to convey, and what does it mean to us, okay? So that's important. As we do that, I'm going to start with something a little bit different. We do that here on occasion, right? I want to watch and listen to a Neil Young song called Words, or Between the Lines of Age. And we're going to put the words up to it. And I want you to look and try and pay attention to what the song is singing about. I'm going to ask you what these words mean. Now, I can tell you they are probably going to be confusing. When I first saw them, and I've been listening to this song for years, I love Neil Young. I started looking at these words, and I was like, what is wrong with this guy? What do these things even mean? But then as I continued to look at it and really tear it apart a little bit, it started to make sense, and I said, this guy's a genius. That's why I love him. So watch the words. Listen to the song. We're not going to play the whole song, but we'll play through um, the first part, and then you're, I'll, you're playing the song, I have yeah. to bring it down. What's that? You're doing the song? No. We're playing Neil Young, <laughs> Between the Lines of Age, and it's going to be found on the internet right now as we look it up, because we didn't look it up yet. Can we get the internet? I don't know if we got the internet. <laughs> <laughs> right. If we can't, then we'll just look at the words. If you just punch in words, Neil Young, on YouTube. Actually, you know what? Rather than you it's, might be able to find it on your phone. It's whether we have a connection. Well, that's what I'm saying. We might be able to find it on your phone. Just get the. Oh, what? So yeah, no, we don't. No connection. No connection. 
And as you said, if we go back to the beginning of the verse again, sorry, Joe, I'm making you work today. Someone and someone were down by the pond looking for something to plant on the lawn, okay? Here's a person looking out at the world. They're inside the house, and all they're seeing is these people kind of doing things around them. Now, these people, someone and someone, obviously they're probably someone that he knows, right? But these people just come over. I can't even, I don't even remember who they are. They're probably like great grandkids or something. And they come over, and they do things like plant flowers in my lawn. But do they really talk to me? Do they really know me? Do they really spend time with me? And, you know, I'm sitting here hoping this water will boil is a, is a, is a great key because they're watching these people do all this activity around them for them. And all they're doing is going, yeah, I don't, what are they up to? Man, I wish this water would boil. I mean, these words are great in the context of what they are, right? They really kind of come to life when you look at what they are and what they mean. As we started to talk about earlier, there are phrases that people use all the time that are either misunderstood or misused, and yet if we can come to the place where we understand them, they have deeper meaning, and they're important. So the first one I talked about is accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior into your heart, accepting Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior. Now, what does this mean? Because you've heard this before. I'm sure you've heard it quite a bit. What does it mean? Well, it's interesting because there are a couple things at play here. First of all, accepting Jesus into your heart. Okay? Accepting Jesus into your heart. What does that even mean? If we look at 1 Corinthians 3.16, it says, Don't you know that yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? Okay? As people who have come to the place where we understand God's message and we say, God, I want to be forgiven. I want to know you. I want, to, I want you to be a part of my life. Because of what Jesus did, I'm praying to be forgiven and accept you into my life. This element, God talks about the fact that his spirit dwells in our midst, in us. Okay? And even more importantly, if we want to see it even clearer, Romans 10.9. If you claim in the mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Right here. If you believe in your heart. What does that phrase mean? What did it mean in the Bible? What did it talk about? Well, it's talking about emotion, right? It's talking about feeling. It's talking about something inside that we know deep inside is a part of who we are because we feel it because we connect with it at a deeper level. Accepting Jesus into your heart is really saying, I believe what Jesus did comes for me. I now understand he died on that cross for my sin. So that tells, tells me something.